How is week of prayer so far for you guys? Blessings? It has been a blessing for me also. Um, what my brother and sister share has really touched me. And um, to, today I, I want to share with you guys also you know, what the Lord has shared with me in my study. Um, my, my chapter is pretty long, so I'm going to try to cut as much as possible and uh, try to make the, get to my point as quick as possible. Uh, but before I go any further, I just want to have a short word of prayer, and uh, I pray that you guys join along with me and pray for me also as i speaking, that I may speak clearly, and that each one of you may understand it very clearly. Yeah, let's pray. Um, Father in heaven, I just want to thank you, Lord, for your promises that you give it to, to me, Lord, and that you give me the spirit of peace, Lord, not, not of, you know, just being afraid or scared or nervous or anything, Lord. And I just thank you so much for your mercy and kindness for providing, Lord, and uh, you give us this word that we can read and we can hear from you. It's amazing, Father. We thank you so much for your words. Father, I know that I am a sinner. I have a so much sin inside of me, I know that I'm not worthy to share this word. And uh, I know that I cannot do it myself either to share this word. And only your spirit alone that can, can reach the people, Lord. I just want to pray, Lord, for your spirit to really come down here and to really speak to me and also to speak to my brother and sisters, Lord. And may this, this worship really make an impact on us, Lord. And that you may help us to walk in closer to you. Father, I just want to really ask you that, Lord, that you may really hide me behind your shadow on the cross, Lord, that self may be taken away. Father, I pray and plead, Lord, that you will take, take over, Lord. I can't do it, Lord. And I beg you, Lord, please, use, use this time for your glory and honor, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So the story that I'm going to share is found in um, 2 Kings chapter 3. If you bring your Bible, let's open it there, please. Second King, chapter three. So, uh, for like verse one to six, I'm just gonna paraphrase this. Um, paraphrase it. Um, basically, Jeho Jehoram, his his father was Ahab, and his father died, and then he became king. And when he was a king, um, he he took away all his father's basically idols like Bill and he pulled it away he just I don't know what he do with it he, he, but he didn't the Bible didn't say that he destroyed it but he, he just put it away and then during even though he put it away even though he's trying to do nice thing he's still sinning against God that's what the Bible say he still keep in sin and um, during his time when he was reigning as a king the there's a there's another group of people, the Moabites, the Moab people, basically they're supposed to pay tax to the Israel, the king of Israel, which is Jehoram, that's who he is. Um, and uh, they decided that the Moabites, they decided that not, they are not going to pay tax anymore to the Israelites. And so the king of Israel like, was not happy with that, and he, he, got, he got mad. So, he's, so the problem is just between two of them in, in the Bible. But then Je uh, Jehoram, the king of Israel, he went, let, let's, read it, let's read it from uh, verse 7. Let's read it here. First King chapter 2, uh, chapter 3, verse 7. He says, Then he went and set, sent to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab has rebelled rebel against me. Will you go with me to fight against Moab? And he said, I will go. I am, I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Verse 8, then he said, which way shall we go? Shall we go up? And he answered, by way of the wilderness of Edom. So the Israelite, the king of Israelites, knows that if he, if he go by himself to, the, to fight against the Moabite, he's not going to win. So he decided to go and call uh, Jeho Jehoshaphat. And uh, Jehoshaphat, 
is a good man. He's a, he's a he's very godly man. He loves the Lord. Every time before he, before he go to war, he would rely on God. He would ask God to help him with the wars. And he, he hates the people who worship idol. But this time, I don't know what caused him to accept the king of Israel um, request, but somehow he did it. So he, 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 made, a, he made a mistake there, uh, and we, we, we will see it by, um, when we read a few verses, it says, it says it, verse 9 here. It says, so the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and the king of Edom, and they marched on that roundabout route seven days, and there was no water for the army, nor for the animals that followed them. So when the king of uh, King Jehoshaphat go along with the king of uh, Israel, they they plan on going to the battle, and they go in in a wilderness to go around the city, the Moab city, so that they can attack. They can attack uh, the the city without letting the Moabites you know, uh, be aware of it. But when they go there on the way, the Bible tells us that they, they are in trouble, that they have no water. You know, I, I learned a lesson that sometime, you know, God is always there for us, sister, brother. God is always there for us. And he, the beautiful thing about God, our God, is that we can hear from him, and he always talks to us, and we can ask him, we can inquire of him, like, whether we should make that choice or not, we can ask it for him, and he would tell us. But Jehoshaphat, somehow, because he didn't inquire of the Lord, because he, do, he was doing his own will, and then later on he, he got into trouble that he, he shouldn't be facing. It's the same thing as you and I. You know, the, God is there for us, and we have the, so much privilege that we can ask him from God. But a lot of times we ignore God and we start to do it in our own will. And when we do that, then we will be in trouble. But you know, I have, I have a story that I want to share with you guys how that I asked God to help me with my choice and how he helped me. Um, last year, I was, very, I, have, I was praying about it that the Lord, the Lord will help me whether I should apply for a citizen or not. And... Uh, I, I sent the Lord really, really answered answer my prayer in a clear way, but I can't ignore the Lord. But then Abner, in the summer, he's like, Kepo, you really need to apply for your citizen. If you, you know, you can, lose your green card, you can lose your green card and everything. I was like, yeah, you are right, bro. I was, I was praying about it, and the Lord told me to apply for it, and I'm kind of taking my time trying like, not to listen to the Lord now. But he, 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 he pressed me forward, and... Uh, and then I started to apply for it. And as I did it, the Lord really like provided a way for me. I have to go to uh, Fort Smith every time my, I have an appointment. And it's like three hours, almost three hours from here. And I, every time I go to Fort Smith, the Lord's always provide a car for me. And uh, I appreciate God for that, you know, that he really, he really, he, he really lead, lead me, you know, and he really provided. And friend, I just want to encourage you guys that, you know, you really take, take the privilege that you have. You know, that require of the Lord. Whatever choice that you, you're about to make, that you will ask him from the Lord, and he will help you. And um, so while the king of Israel and the king of Edom and uh, Jehoshaphat, while they are facing the water problem, because they've been traveling for seven days very far away from where they live, now they don't know what to do. If they, go, if they go farther, and, they, and they get, if they get to the battlefield, they're going to be killed by the Moabites. And if they go back, then they're just wasting their time there. But, and then in verse 10 it says, the king of Israel complaining, and he says, And the king of Israel said, Alas, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And when I read these verbs, verse, it just kind of amazed me, you know, because the Moab, this king, this king, king of Israel, nobody told him to go to war with the Moabites. 
he just decided on his own choice. And then he, and then he, he started, when he faced problem, he, he blamed on God. And I learned something that, you know, it's, it's a, that's our human nature. That whenever we go through something, it's our choice that we make. Then when we go through something that is tough for us, and that is bad for us, and then we start to, re, to blame on God. But in there, I saw a different, a diff, different lesson also that, you know, when he said, for God has called these three kings together to deliver them into the, the hand of Moab. You know, if you put yourself in the, uh, the king of Jehoshaphat, and you hear this word that, you know, um, that you're going to be delivered into the king of Moab. How would you feel, you know? You, and I feel like Jehoshaphat, when he heard those kind of words, it, it may lead him, you know, it, it may lead him to, to start doubting God whether, whether he should go, go to God or not, you know. It may lead him to think that way. It may lead him to think that God, God is mad at him because the choice that he, ma he made, it was not God's will. He, he, he made it himself also. He know that he, it was his mistake that he come along with the king of Israel. So when the king of Israel said that he's, he's going to be delivered in there, he know that he's going to be in he, I'm, I'm thinking that he was tempted to think that way, to think that God is not going to care for him. But nevertheless, friend, I'm going to tell you something. You know, when, when you are in trouble, when you're in position, when you realize that you have made a mistake, I want to encourage you guys that you guys stay, keep going. Look into the Lord. Look at, turn your eyes to Jesus Christ. Because you know, the thing is, if you're in trouble, and if, if you don't make any further step, you're not going to be successful. And if, if you just stay there, you're going to be killed. So the, I mean, like, what, what I'm trying to say is, like, you know, if you are in a position where you cannot do anything else, then you just got to go to God. You know, you got you to gotta go to God. Even though if you know God is, you, you make a mistake against God, you still got to go to God. If you just stay there, your problem is not going to solve. It's better to try than not to try. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, the, beautiful, the, beautiful, the beautiful thing about King Jehoshaphat, that's what he did. You know, um, that's the beauty about him. Even though he knew that it was his mistake by coming along with the king of Israel, he's still pressing forward. And he, this is what he said in verse, verses 11, 11. He says, But Jehoshaphat said, is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? So one of the servant of the king of Israel answered and said, Elijah, the son of Shaphat, is here, who poured water on the hand of Elijah. And verse 12, And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. You know, friends, I, I, can, see that, I can see that Jehoshaphat is guilty of, of the, the, the choice that he's making. But he's, he's pressing forward to the Lord. And when I look in, when I, this is a lesson that really for us we've got to learn, brother. We really got to stand up when we fall into sin. When we know that we make a mistake, we still got to press on just like this guy. I remember Bible verse that um, I used to I used to claim. It was found in First John chapter three verse twenty. That's beautiful promises. It says, "If our heart condemned us, God is greater than our heart." You may commit sin. You may com Right now, you're like really struggling with sin, and you're addicted to some type of sin. But friend, you know, even though you know that these things make you feel guilty, still come to God. Because he said he's great, he is greater than your heart, and he can change you. And God himself also speaks, he also said in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, saying, Come, let us reason together, and I will make you see as what is snow. And that's God's promise. Very encouraging, and I really hope that you guys really make a step, just like Jehoshaphat makes a step to God. Don't worry about your sin. Just look at Jesus Christ, because he can take care, take care of your sin. If you just look into your sin, nothing's going to help out. Nothing's going to help your sin. Only, only God can help you with your sin. 
And then, um, so when Jehoshaphat realized his need, when he looking for, you know, he, he's, looking for, uh, he's looking for the prophet, you know, he's looking for somebody to talk to that he may get a help from. And uh, somehow in, in the army, when I read it from the commentary, it says that Jehoshaphat, uh, actually, uh, Elijah actually was in the, midst of, in, the midst, in the midst of the army also while they're traveling to places. Je, uh, Elijah actually was traveling with, uh, uh, along with them. And, uh, and when the Jehoshaphat is as, asking, for, asking for the prophet, the king of Israel's uh, servant no, noticed that uh, Elisha was among them. So he told Jehoshaphat that, that um, God's prophet is here. It's, it's among us, you know. And it just kind of encouraged me to, to see that, you know, um, God is there for us. When we are looking for him, when we're in trouble, he is there for us. And when, Jeho when uh, Jehoshaphat needed the prophet, the prophet is there. That's, that's, that's what God, our God is. When we need him the most, he is there for us. He, it's like he always troubled with us, but we just didn't realize. And, and our Lord is always there for us. It's, it's, it's just encouraging to, to see that. Even though we are sinners, even though we make a mistake, he's there. And uh, when, Eli, when uh, th those, it's kind of like a remind me of Jesus Christ too, you know. Jesus Christ is always there for a sick people, always there for the people who are discouraging and demon-possessed, and Jesus tried to heal everybody. He's always there for other people at, at his time. And uh, he did things at, at, at the perfect time, all the time. Um, and that's something that I want, I want you, to, you guys to realize and to keep in your minds every day that God is there for us. And uh, so let, let's read it from verse 13. When, before I read it, um, when Jehoshaphat and the king of Israel and Edom, they, they came to Elisha, no, they, they, they want to talk to Elisha. And uh, verse 13 says, Then Elisha said to the king of Israel, What have I to do with you? Go to your prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. But the king of Israel said to him, No. For the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. You know, when Elijah, when Elisha saw the king of Israel right away, you know, he, he's like, you know, we have nothing in common. You worship other gods, and I worship a different god. And uh, you, you, should go to your, you should go to your god, you know. That's what, that's what Elisha said to the king of uh, Israel. You should go to your your God, ask your God for help. And friend, by the way, this is not to show that to show that um, Elijah is mean to the king. But what Elijah wants to see is that this king humble himself. You know, sometimes, like when you look at Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, he he talked to a lot of sinners, and sometimes, like um, the Pharisee, will come to Jesus Christ, and then they will start to tempt Jesus Christ. You know, and. Uh, one time, Jesus Christ answered them, you are of your father, the devil. So that's to show that there are different, the, the, different, the differences. And God, uh, you know, Jesus Christ really, whenever he faced, he faced uh, the Pharisee, he's really trying to reach out to them. It's not like Jesus Christ don't like the Pharisee. He really care about the Pharisee. He really want to help them. But they're just not humbling themselves, just like the king of Israel. He didn't want to humble himself. Instead, he's like, God's going to kill me. God's going to put me in somebody's hand right now. And that was, that was the worst choice that you can ever have. Don't ever think that God's going to put you in a position where you're going to be killed. Don't ever think that. He loves you so much. He cares about your life. If he didn't love you, he's not going to give you his son, Jesus Christ. And if he didn't love you, he's not going to make effort to come down to the earth. But because he loves you, he makes effort to come down here. And that's what you need to know. Don't think the way the king of Israel I think. Think differently. Think, think good of God. Because God is really a loving God. And, uh, and then in verse 14, this Elijah continued to say, 
As the Lord of hosts live, uh, lives, before whom I stay, stand, surely were it not that I regard the prince of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look at you nor see you. So when, when, when um, Elijah is talking to, talking to the king of Israel, he also noticed that Jehoshaphat was there. And he knows the spirit of, the Jehoshaph the spirit of Jehoshaphat. He knows, he knows that Jehoshaphat was a humble man. And because of that, he's willing to take time and to pray to God. In, uh, in verse 15, it says here, But bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. That's like Jesus Christ. When we came to him with a humble heart, he's willing to, to take his time and talk to us to do anything for us. And uh, I guess that's, that's one thing that the king, the king of Israel did, didn't do it. He didn't humble himself. But God did it for Eli, uh, Jehoshaphat because he was humble. And then God, and by the way, he called, uh, Elijah called the musician. And the reason they call it the musician is because so that they can have the right mind. And usually when they play music, that's, that is to, to, kick, to kick out the evil the evil spirit. And they try to have the right mind and they try to humble before God, this group. And uh, Elisha, Elisha is trying to bring everybody you know, to have the right spirit with God and to, to talk to God. And, and then when they talk to God, the hand of the Lord fell upon, upon them. And uh, verse, verse 16 says, And he said, Thus say the Lord, Make this valley full of dishes. So when the hand of the Lord came upon uh, Elisha, and then he told, he, the king told Elisha, I mean the Lord, God, told Elisha to, to tell these people to make dishes. And by the way, these people, they've been trying for seven days in the wilderness. They're tired, and they're thirsty, and they're drying out. And now God is asking them to make di uh, dishes with the whole field. And now, you know, that we, we can see that the king is, of Israel, he didn't want to humble before God. And now God is making him humble. And now he, everybody had have to, have to dig a hole in there. But you, can't, you, you probably might wonder why God, God did that. You know, why is God allow, asking these people to, make it, to, to dig a hole when, when he can just bring, bring the water right away? You know, why, why is it dig a hole? When I, when I read about these, these, these questions, it kind of make me th think about it too, you know. Sometimes, uh, Miss Sherry just shared a, a quote from me, talk about how the Christian people, sometimes uh, believe in, when you trust in God, your life is not going to go smoothly, as you expect it. I mean, God is always there. God is going to be there always, always. But sometimes you're going to have to go through something that the Lord, in order that the Lord may help you grow. In order that you may, you may grow, he, he's, he's trying to put you, put you in a, a place where, uh, where you're going you're gonna to have to face some, uh, I guess, trials. But, uh, but the Lord make these dishes. The Lord told them to make these dishes. And it's just not, you know, just to punish them. But this is to help them to learn that when you come to the Lord, you need to humble. Because this, that's something that God, God requires of us. God wants to help us. But if we're not humble, he can't do anything. Uh, Micah 6, it says, He has showed the old man what is good, and what does the Lord require of thee? And to walk just, justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with the Lord. And that's something that the Lord requires of us. And uh, if we don't have that, then he can't do anything. But I believe that the reason why God gave, make them to make dishes is so that they can be humble and so that they can, they can start to open up their heart to God. And um, it's the same thing God's also asking us. You know, the, the heart, in our heart, there's sometimes that we try to fill with something else to fill that space. You know, 
that space that we have, friend, instead of trying to fill with something else, allow God to be in that space to fill that for you. And, um, and then the, the, Bible, the Bible continues to say, For thus saith the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water, so that you, you, your cattle, and your animals may drink. And verse 18 says, And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. The Lord say, all, all the problems that you go through, it's simple. You just come to me, and I'll do it for you. And I will fill you, whatever you need. Bring in your broken cup, and I will fill it overflow. And I'll, I will let you drink, even your candle, anything. And not only that, I'm going to let your enemy suffer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight the, the, the battle for you. And you don't have to fight it yourself. That's very encouraging. To know that God is there for us and not against us. Amen. And I really hope that you guys keep that in mind. That the Lord is there, really there for us. And uh, I just, I just want to pray that you know, each one of us, that we will really open our heart to the Lord. And, and when we open it very deep, like, like we cut, we cut um, the dishes, like when we dig, uh, dig dishes, when we cut it really deep in our heart, then we can refill it all the time. For, like what I'm trying to say is, you know, Pastor Paul gave me an example, like, like rainy, when they rain, the waters, they, they, they come very, like, a lot, right? In the first, the, first, the first time. When it's raining for the first day, the water, it's just like, we, you see it sometimes, like, the pond is like just overflowing. But the next few days, it just all drain out. And so, let, let's say if the children, I mean, if these people didn't, didn't make a, what's it called, a dish, they're just going to have water for a little bit. And then it's, it's, it's all going to be gone. And so God wants us to do the same thing, dig, dig really deep in our heart so that he can come very deeply, so that even when there's a trouble and tribulations come around us, we we'll stay, we will remember his promises and we, we can still encourage ourselves by using his word. And Fred, I just want, I just want to share with you guys, you know, my, my main point is that really, know that God really cares for your lives and that he really, he really wants want to, you know, even though he really want to make you f be free from sin. And uh, I just want to let you know that even when you, you know, you're struggling with sin, even though you, you are, um, you know, you just keep coming and saying you feel guilty about it. Even then, I just, I just, I just want to say that, you know, just keep continuing coming back to the Lord because he really, he really is caring. And uh, my, my, my worship is very short. I know that, but uh, I have an appeal to you guys also. Uh, maybe you, in your lifetime, you're trying to rely on something, and, uh, it's, it, and it, a lot of time, you know, you rely on something and it fails you, and it, 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 is, it didn't seem success. And you, you're trying to find something else to try to rely on, you're trying to you're trying to find someone, you know, to help you. And uh, over time, since you keep feeling and feeling, then you kind of start to feel afraid to trust other people. But I just want to, I just want to say that, you know, friends, that our, our God, that we, our God is we can, we can rely on Him. And my appeal to, God, to, to you guys that would you allow God or would you give God another chance to, you know, to, to be your God and that you can rely on. And, and if, you, if you really want to, really want to, you know, trust God again and rely on Him again, I just want to ask you that we all kneel down and pray, pray to God. Father, I just want to thank you so much for this word, Lord. I know that uh, 
My speak was very quick, and uh, I know that uh, I'm kind of stuck a little bit, but I thank you, Lord, Lord, that you, you still help me to go through this, and, uh, and I thank you that, Lord, you will make it clear for everybody that my main point and what I'm trying to share in this story. And, Lord, I pray that you, you reveal to my brother and sister your true, true love, Lord, and your true character. And I just want to pray, Lord, that you may help them see that you really care about them, and you really care for their soul. And I want to pray that, Lord, you show to them that you are the God who we, we can rely on for anything, Lord. And Father, I just want to pray that you continue to work each one of my, my brother's heart and work in my heart also, Lord, and change each one of us. And Lord, I have seen that you have changed many people. Even in the Bible, you, since you changed Saul's life, Lord. And uh, I want to pray that you do the same thing for us. Lord, please create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, Lord. And Father, I just want to pray that you help us to, as we go back, Lord, that we may still think about these thoughts, Lord, and that we may go even deeper into, into the, the love of yours, Lord, to help us understand it, Lord. And Lord, I just want to thank you so much again for using me, and I just want to pray that you help this Thoughts stick in my brother and sister's mind, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.